Hey guys, so in a lot of my videos I go on and on and on about capacitors and adding capacitors to your projects. And I especially talk about this when I'm working with ESP microcontrollers. So why is this? Why am I always saying, oh we're going to add a capacitor to, you know, make it, make the signal a little less sketchy? Well, the reason for that is because, especially when you have things like relays or any sort of a coil, motors, relays, uh, ah, solenoids. So what happens is when you actuate those devices, they're working with a lot of magnetic stuff and a lot of electromagnetism, which I'm just not even gonna go into the details about because I don't know all the details about electromagnetism and I'll just sound stupid. The point is though, is that when these things actuate, they cause giant power spikes in whatever your power source is. It doesn't really matter what it is. When this thing actuates, that, that nice straight line of power will suddenly go and it'll, it'll go up and down. And if you have a sensitive device like the ESP, it will potentially reset the device, you know, at sort of a minimum case and in worst case scenario, it will actually it'll fry those chips. So those chips, they're not very power tolerant. And I talk about that a lot. I say this, you know, the ESP is not very power tolerant, so you need really, really clean signals. And one of the ways that we do that is through the use of capacitors. So capacitors acting sort of like batteries. They're like very, very quick batteries. When there's a dip in that power, the, the capacitor sort of takes up that, that slack and provides extra power. And when there's a big spike in power, the capacitor absorbs that spike. So capacitors are these wonderful little devices for absorbing basically noise in your signal. So to demonstrate that, I've set up here a just a standard little 5 volt, I have a 5 volt power source coming from this white wire here. Uh, it's coming just off of a really crappy linear regulator, the 7805, which is not uncommon in hobby projects. And I have a relay, and I've wired that up to a little button so I can turn the button on and off. And I've connected it all up to an oscilloscope, which is appearing in the, the top right of your screen now. So you can see we have a nice, clean display. There's no signal on there yet. But if I push the button here, you'll see there's a giant signal that just happened. So you'll see, look at that. On the right and left, it's nice and flat. So that's our 5 volt signal. And then the middle there, there's a giant dip and then a giant spike. And so that's caused by the relay, the coil in the relay activating, which closes the relay switch. So when you have that happen, like I said, I don't know all the physics of it, so I'm not even going to try to talk about it for fear of getting attacked. But what's happened here is we now have a giant dip and spike in our signal, which could reset this or it could fry it. And if you'll look, you'll see that the, the difference here, okay, the peak-to-peak -peak difference is 2 point something volts, and that's not even that bad. Watch what happens if I tweak the trigger a little bit and I get the relay actuating a few times. We're going to see an even bigger spike. All right, there we go. So I took a few tries. I did click the button on and off quite a few times. But there we go. Now we have a peak to peak of 3.7 volts. So when that relay triggered on and off, it dipped down by about 2 volts and, spi and spiked back up by about 2 volts. And that's a huge range. I mean, think about that. It's dropping, the minimum here is 2.48 volts. That's less than you can run an ESP on. And then it spikes all the way up to 6.2 volts. That's way more than enough to fry the ESP. So, in this one little clip here, we can see that it's going to, it's going to power off the ESP, and then it's going to fry the ESP. And that's just, that's no good. So, that's why I'm always adding capacitors to my projects. So if we put this little capacitor in, you'll see we're probably we're not going to get the perfectly clean signal because first of all, there is no perfectly clean signal. This is the real world. It's not theoretical. 
But the other reason is, is because it's just one capacitor. I'm throwing it into the circuit. I'm not doing any testing on it. So we're probably still going to get some spikes and dips, but hopefully it should be a lot less. Now that we have it all cleared out, we have the capacitor in place. This is a thousand microfarad capacitor, by the way. Let's try this again. So I'm going to tweak the trigger level and we're going to see what our sort of new spikes are. All right, so I've put this at 3.9 volt trigger. And so there we go. You can see a little spike, a little, little spike and dip there. And so now we have this little spike and dip, but it's way less than it was before. So if we look at this, it's peak to peak, it's only two volts, it's 2.2 volts. It's mi minimum is 3.48 and it's maximum is 5.7 something. So already you can see that just by adding this one capacitor, we've halved the amount of uh, spikiness, a noise in our signal. So I can continue doing this a few times and we get, yeah, we have about the same signal. So you can see that helped a lot. And if I cared about this circuit and I wanted to test it out more, I'm sure that I could get it way cleaner, but just as is, the difference between this and something like that is a, it's a huge difference. So adding capacitors to your projects will basically always help. And you can see some a lot of this ca these cases, it didn't cause a giant spike when I clicked the button. It was a, you know a smaller spike that was more manageable that probably wouldn't kill the ESP. But you never know, you know, it's like, I've had a lot of projects where it works fine for, you know, while I'm sitting there testing it, but then later on it does this random weird reset or it fries itself and I'm just kind of there scratching my head. So adding these capacitors, it basically gives you sort of this assurance that, okay, I've added the capacitors. So when the relay triggers, there's not a one in 20 chance that it will, you know, brown out the ESP or something like that, it actually will, you know, it'll work. So adding capacitors, that's why I do it. You guys should do it, especially on any projects with an ESP. Uh, you should add not only some nice big, you know, 1000, 2000 microfarad capacitor, but also like a 100 nanofarad capacitor right at the power lines because that also helps just clean up that signal just a little bit more. So Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope this, you know, helps you guys out with your own projects. You know, if you guys are feeling real nice today, I have set up a Patreon for this channel. And, you know, I hope you guys maybe have noticed that some of the video here is a little bit better. I, I have two cameras running simultaneously. And all of that is because of the people who support me on Patreon. So if you want to join those people, go to patreon.com slash it kind of works and, you know, toss in a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, whatever you toss in goes to making the channel better. And if you're new to this channel, then, you know, if you like this video, just subscribe to the channel. It's that easy. You just click the little red button and you're done. All right. Thanks, guys. I will see you all next time.